tears, trafficking, and red tape. Tonight, I want to bring you a story of families trying to piece their lives back together after gun violence stole what is most precious from them. And the city battling against a federal agency and dynamics beyond that agency for access to what one local official calls a critical tool to crack down on the gun trafficking behind so many losses of lives. Do you feel like there are, are too many weapons on our yeah, streets? Absolutely. Absolutely. And where are they coming from? Crystal Gonzalez is 18-year-old Aaliyah's mother. She was still learning so much. Then, July 2nd, 2023. Aaliyah Gonzalez was one of two people killed in a mass shooting on this South Baltimore block in July of 2023. 30 people were shot in total, two of them killed after what police say were exchanges of gunfire. Gonzalez remembers finding her daughter's body at the scene. And I just turned and I looked and I knew that that was her because I could see her foot. She would have called me a long time ago if there was a shooting. And the police officers are saying, ma'am, you don't want to see her like this. And I'm like, you don't know. You don't know. I need her. I, oh, my God. I need her. People don't know that. I need her. And the next time I saw her was at the funeral home. It's a reality for so many Americans. A lot of the guns used in shootings like these countrywide were originally purchased legally before changing hands and being used in crimes. But public officials, by law, can't see exactly where these guns originate. Only law enforcement can. We're heading into City Hall where Baltimore's mayor is actually suing the ATF to get some of this data. It's data that he thinks can be a major piece of the public safety equation. We don't have any gun stores here in the city of Baltimore, but there are some, you know, less than a mile outside of our jurisdiction. And we don't recover any guns on the streets of Baltimore from that particular dealer. But there are some 60, 70, 80, 100 miles away that we do. Something is wrong with that. In 2003, Congress enacted provisions known as the T.R.D. Amendments, restricting access to the information the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives finds on where a gun came from. The restrictions have loosened a bit over the past two decades to include local police, but city and state public officials still can't access the gun trace information, even in that July 2023 Baltimore mass shooting. You know where the guns used and that shooting came from. And in that case, not yet, but we know chances are it didn't come from Baltimore City. 2022 ATF data showed most of Maryland's crime guns didn't originate in Maryland. Even if Baltimore's mayor doesn't know exactly where they came from. President Biden partly campaigned on repealing amendments like these back in 2020, but they remain in place. You feel President Biden has done enough when it comes to gun safety. Absolutely, the biggest hindrance to the president going further is Congress. Over 60 Democratic members of Congress have urged President Biden to direct the Department of Justice to review its interpretation of the amendments. The beef isn't necessarily with the no. ATF. The ATF should share information with us, yeah. but we're also very cognizant of what, what reality they live in with Congress and others. It's a dynamic ATF director, Stephen Dettelback, lives in every day. Last year, 645,700 times we were asked to trace firearms and send that lead back to local law enforcement who might be conducting an investigation. That information can then only be shared with law enforcement for investigative purposes, correct? Congress has restrictions on how we can share and use and divulge trace information. We at ATF, we don't write the laws, we abide by them. He wouldn't uh, comment on the law itself. There are too many guns that fall into the wrong hands in this nation. We have uh, a legal firearms commercial market and it is too easy to move firearms from the legal market to that illegal black market. The firearm industry widely supports the amendments as they are. This data, if released, will result in, in naming and shaming of dealers based on no facts. Even if multiple guns eventually used in crimes were bought from a single store. From a dealer's perspective. It's not indicative that anybody's done anything wrong. I don't care about that standpoint at all because the majority of these people who are afraid aren't the ones who are targeted. Michelle Hines, like Crystal Gonzalez, also had a child shot and killed in Baltimore. Isaiah Carter was 16. 
We need to hold the people who are trafficking the guns and bringing the guns here accountable. And it will help with data. But again, this is not going to be an immediate fix. She sees a deeper issue. Why are people carrying guns in this city? Maybe because the norm is in order to be safe, you mm. need to be strapped. I hate that more and more mothers are experiencing what we're experiencing. You can sue whoever you want to. The guns are still on the streets. How would you describe the state of, of guns on the streets of Baltimore? It's easier for people in some neighborhoods to get guns than it is to get healthy food. I'm not someone that's going to try to go and take someone's uh, lawfully owned uh, weapon away from them. But people who should not have them and people who are irresponsibly selling them to people that they know are trafficking, uh, those folks should be held responsible. The sanctity of American guns has to be outweighed by the sanctity of American lives. Now, we reached out to the White House about the TR amendments, and a spokesperson told us that early in the administration, they did ask the Department of Justice to review its interpretation of the amendment. They referred us to the DOJ for further comment. The DOJ didn't provide us a comment for this story. Former Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake, great to see you. You were the mayor of Baltimore when I was a local reporter there, so glad to have you on. Um, look, I was I, just about to say we miss you in Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a while, a few years now. Um, but, but look, I mean, you saw some of the story that just aired before this, and from your perspective as a former mayor, what do you make of Baltimore suing the ATF to get data on the specific places where these crime guns are originating? And how much of a difference do you think this is actually going to make? So as mayor, I tried everything that we could think of, whether it was uh, looking at violence as a health crisis to looking at it as a, um, you know, as a criminal justice issue. We did everything. And that's what the mayor is doing now. Uh, mayor Scott is suing the ATF, but it's really not the ATF. The ATF didn't make these rules. These are rules imposed by an NRA influenced Congress to shield uh, distributors that are flooding guns into our communities. And I applaud the mayor uh, because we have to do everything we can, use every tool we can to try to save lives. Yeah, yeah. and look, you, you have also worked as a surrogate for the Biden campaign and the Biden administration has taken significant steps when it comes to guns and gun violence. The, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act of 2022, which made the straw, pur straw purchasing and trafficking federal uh, crimes, a se separate federal crimes. And then executive orders encouraging increased background checks. They also created the first ever Office of Gun Violence Prevention, which both Mayor Scott and one of the moms you just saw said that they've been in touch with at various points since it was created. So I guess, do you believe the Biden administration is doing enough when it comes to violence? And if not, where are those points where they could continue to push things forward? Until we end uh, gun violence in our country, uh, it's never enough. But do I think the Biden administration has done a yeoman's job of trying to make our communities safer? Absolutely. You know, it's time for the Congress people who say uh, that you know that that they want to protect life uh, to come to our cities and to look at what's happening with this uh, the flooding of guns in our communities and help us figure out how to save lives, not just give it lip service. Yeah. And look, we have seen a wide range of voices, even I mentioned in the story as well, a number of Democratic congressmen urging the Biden administration to find opportunities to do more. Because as you mentioned, any person killed is too many people uh, in this country. Um, now, look, you, you were mayor of Baltimore, but also in cities countrywide, it does seem there's not a day that goes by without a shooting or, or mass shooting. And so what what is the first thing from an administrative or policy standpoint that you believe needs to be done to try and make a dent in this dynamic of violence that, again, we've seen cycle over and over and over again at this point? So I think the Biden administration is smart with the the gun violence, um, the gun violence office that they've set up because it does take a concentrated and collaborative effort to make a dent in gun violence. And it's no just one thing. It's everything. So I think that that approach makes sense. 
Um, we all in our in our communities across the country, uh, we have to be on the same page. We have to be willing to work with the police and the police have to be willing to work with the community. We have to rebuild the bonds of trust so we can create a, com a community where the police when something happens that the community, the first person they call is the police. And in some of these communities where gun violence is ravaging them, uh, their relationships with the police is so broken uh, that they don't want to work in collaboration to create safer communities. So there is a lot of work to be done. There's no one thing. Um, I believe always we have to do everything and we have to do it smarter uh, and in, um, in community.